Ms. Transformers 96 here with an update to my Build-A-Figure ranking review. I did a uh, Build-A-Figure ranking a few months back and now I'm going to be doing an update like in that video I did say I was going to be doing updates um, as time would go on and uh, and here's my first update. So um, in that video I ranked all of my Build-A-Figures from the return of Marvel Legends in 2012 up to uh, that present day. I'm going to be doing the same here so this will be the Build-A-Figures from Hasbro from the return of Marvel Legends in 2012 starting with Terrax all the way to the present now. Um, the only ones that will not be included in this uh, countdown are Jubilee, Puck, and Rocket Raccoon because those are the three that I never built. Um, but other than that, I've built all of them from that span of 2012 with the return of Marvel Legends to uh, present day. Um, and in that last video, I did forget one of my build figures so I do have him now, uh, which is um, Hobgoblin, as well as I've completed several other build figures since then, like um, Dormammu, Sandman, Warlock, uh, um, Titus, you know, so I've built a, a few more since then as well. And then uh, I also will say just because as time goes on, you know, my opinions can change and vary slightly. So this will not be in the exact same order as the last time. Uh, I specifically did not watch my video, my previous video before making this list. I made this list without watching it again um, so that it would be a completely fresh list and I wouldn't be swayed in any way to put it in a similar order. So this is all uh, just my feelings from now. So some things are probably in different orders because obviously just as time goes on taste changes you know things that were new and exciting maybe are become you know a little less exciting because you've had them for a while so you can look at them in a different light and things like that so this will be a, uh, um, a kind of new list as well as not to mention there's new figures in this list as well so let's get started in last place, we of course have Hit Monkey. Hit Monkey is from the kind of mini series era of Build a Figures, which is a very much a low point in the Build a Figure history. This figure is nice uh, from a technical standpoint, but as a Build a Figure, he completely shouldn't be one, and uh, definitely is not as good as any of these other Build a Figures that have been released since 2012. Ultron easily takes the 22nd spot as it has an alright sculpt but just absolutely horrible and just horridly lazy paint. Uh, he has silver in some areas and then just this flat like plastic gray in others and they just didn't even bother to paint the backside at all. This is just the uh, the epitome of a lazy build a figure and it's not even that big either so definitely I mean uh, getting a super low spot on this list. At the 21st spot, we have Mandroid. Mandroid is built a figure that I think is alright from a technical standpoint, but it's just one that I really didn't enjoy. Um, I'm more of a fan of the villains, and this is just a really kind of obscure... Uh, um shield, you know, um, weapon, and uh, it also reuses a lot of its parts from a previous build of figures, so it's just, it, it's not one that I'm particularly interested in, didn't really have a whole lot of fun completed him, completing him, and he's the only one on this list where you had to buy two waves to complete him as well, so I'm just not a fan of the way that they distributed this build of figure, I'm not a fan of the character, and I'm not a fan of the figure itself. Taking the 20th slot, we have Giant Man. This is a figure that I, I character-wise, I'm really excited about. Figure-wise, I think it's executed very poorly. I think that the knees do not line up with the position of the feet, always causing him to have his knees kind of pointed in if you have his feet pointed forward. I think that some of the proportions are off. He has a very large head, he has very large hands, and then he has very small shoulders, which just looks really odd. Um, some of the detailing in it is, uh, is nice, though, and obviously he's out of scale. Now, I don't expect them to make one that's in scale, but it would be nice if he was even bigger so that it was even more, uh, you know, so that you could get the idea a bit more than it is at the moment. So, I uh, love the character on this one, just not executed well in the slightest. In 19th place, we have Onslaught. I know this is one that a lot of people do really enjoy. I'm not a big fan of it. I think it's all right, but I do have some serious issues with it. I'm not a fan of the paint. I think that it's just way too clean and shiny and sparkly. It looks cartoonish, and I know that a lot of people defend it for that, but um, I know that their Onslaught has been in cartoons and everything. However, these figures are meant to be from the comics, and personally, I feel like it doesn't represent the comics as well as it does represent the cartoon and therefore I'm not a big fan of it, um, but I know that this one does have quite a large fan base and uh, and you'll, a lot of you will probably be upset about how, uh, how low he is on this list, but for me personally, not one of my favorites. 
And Absorbing Man takes the 18th place. Uh, this is a pretty fun figure. I think that he's kind of neat. I love the idea of having multiple arms to switch out his powers and to have an extra head sculpt, which I think is great. Just, I have some issues with some of the execution, um, ma mainly the, uh, the, the paint on the um, elbow joints does rub off and you can see his like just skin paint underneath, which I think is horrible and it makes it not fun to pose this guy because I'm afraid of messing up the paint. And then his secondary head sculpt, the one that's not on right now just looks awful you know it just has a horrible head sculpt I don't know what they were thinking when they made it so this figure uh, I like the idea of it and it is neat but it is not executed uh, particularly well it has some quality issues Space Knight Venom takes a 17th spot. This is just a, a boring Build-A-Figure for me personally. He's just, he's, you know, he's Build-A-Figure size. He's a really big, bulky, uh, uh, regular Marvel Legends figure, basically. There's not a whole lot new going uh, going on with him. The face obviously doesn't have any expression. That's not the fault of the makers of the figure, though. That's just the character design. And just, it's a figure that I really didn't do much with. You know, I kind of completed him, and, uh, and I was happy to complete him. There wasn't really much... Uh, fun that I had with this figure and therefore kind of relatively boring but you know nice figure. At the 16th spot we have Titus. Titus was a Build-A-Figure that I was absolutely not looking forward to. He was probably my least looking forward to Build-A-Figure of all time. Really just had no anticipation for this guy. And I got it and you know he, he was alright. He was kind of like Space Knight Venom in that he's you know a, a pretty standard size. Nothing really special going on there. However with his arm cannon that I had quite a lot of fun with and with his crazy expressions and then uh, his, his kind of villainous towards Kid Nova I had a lot of fun posing this guy. So so, uh, to my surprise, I enjoyed this build figure actually. Uh, it's not great from a technical standpoint, but I really had a lot of fun with it. Taking the 15th spot, we have Thanos. Thanos, this figure kind of pisses me off, to be honest, um, because I, it could have been so cool. I would really loved a classic Thanos uh, in his comic colors, in, I mean in his classic comic colors uh, for the Build-A-Figure. Instead, they gave us a more modern interpretation. This is something that they do a lot, and I really dislike it. I, I do, I seem to prefer the classic looks of these characters, so I'd much rather get the classic ones before I get the modern ones, and instead they went straight with the modern one and uh, kind of skipped the classic version, which is definitely a shame. I love the head sculpt, I think it's very nice, but the rest of it is, is very uh, is very odd looking. He has limited articulation due to the, the thigh area being blocked, and then his little um, his little costume up uh, at the top there, his shoulder pad area, does pop off extremely easily, which can get annoying when posing him. In 14th place we have Hobgoblin. This is a build a figure that's pretty nice. I actually enjoyed posing this one and it's such a unique version of uh, Hobgoblin that I was I was really intrigued by it which was really cool. The only reason that it's uh, pretty low on this list or at least it's you know more towards the lower side of the middle is that um that it's a pretty small build a figure. I mean the wings and his sword do slightly compensate for his uh, lack in size. However, in general he's pretty small. He's he's just he's an average figure with with the wins and uh, this guy could have been a figure in uh, just in the series in general didn't really need to be the build a figure but the figure itself is very nice and it's all a new sculpt and number 13th, we have uh, Odin. Uh, this is a build figure that I do enjoy. I don't think it's a fantastic from a technical standpoint. I think that the elbows are extremely hindered, which is very annoying, but I like the figure. I like the character and I like the execution of the figure. The cape is very cool, has a lot of movement in it, and I love the massive staff. And I'm a big fan of that head sculpt, as well as I do appreciate the fact that you only need to buy five figures to complete him, as opposed to the six to eight that really just about everybody else on this list uh, needs. So I do kind of take that in to consideration and therefore his somewhat small size doesn't bother me because you don't need as many uh, you didn't need to buy as many people to build him. 12th place goes to the one that started it all in 2012 with the return of Marvel Legends, we have Terrorax. Uh, Terrorax is a neat character and I think that the figure is executed quite nicely. He was a nice way to start it out. He's not particularly massive unfortunately, however he is just a nice figure in general and I'm a big fan of that head sculpt. I think there's so much expression there. It looks like it just ripped right out of the comics. Love that one eye is bigger than the other. I, I, I think that's just great and then I do love the paint job, especially in the, um, in the gray area. I think that there's excellent uh, wash going on there, which is a little bit more dynamic than we're really getting nowadays for the most part. So I do like this build figure quite a lot. 
A lot of the place goes to Arlem Zola. As you can see, I do have his regular and variant versions. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy this build figure. From a technical standpoint, it's really nothing too special. He's relatively small. However, I do like the character a lot, and I love the character design. Uh, so I had a ton of fun with these, and that's the reason that I did buy all the pieces to build the variant one is uh, too, you know, it's such a waste to do that, but I really enjoyed this build a figure and I had a ton of fun with it once I completed it, and therefore, even though it's not a great figure, it definitely deserves a nice buy on this list because I really enjoy it personally. Ultimate Green Goblin takes the 10th place. Uh, this is a Build-A-Figure that I did really enjoy at the time. I'm not a big fan that it reuses some of the pieces from Hulk, however, they've, it's updated the pieces quite nicely, and I do really love the fire effect, as well as all the detail in the actual skin tone. Ninth place goes to Sandman. This is basically the better version of Absorbing Man in my opinion. It's a figure that uses some of the same pieces, torso and legs, and um, and then uses the arms to express their power. However, doesn't have the quality issues that Absorbing Man has. Uh, the paint doesn't wear off. There's excellent texturing in the arm sections, which I really love. And I do like the fact that he does come with accessories as far as interchangeable hands and two head sculpts. Both of his head sculpts are really great. I absolutely personally love both of the heads sculpt, so he definitely deserves a nice spot on this list. The spot has to go to Rhino. This is a build of figure that I really do enjoy. It's, he's obviously a classic Spider-Man villain, which I do love as well, and uh, the figure itself is executed really nicely. There's excellent uh, detailing in it throughout the entire figure. is just wonderful detail, and then on top of that, the paint is just as good. He has an excellent uh, kind of gray uh, paint job with a more cool gray, uh, kind of almost like a steel gray kind of wash into it, which looks fantastic, and then I love the fact that you get two head sculpts with this one. In seventh place, we have Groot. This is a build figure that I did really love at the time, and I still do like. However, some of his uh, his novelty has worn off, considering that they've released a Groot in the regular series. So he just kind of he doesn't feel that special as a build figure anymore, uh, which is kind of odd. But I still do really like it. The detail throughout him is wonderful. There's not an inch on him that's not super well detailed, and then he has a really nice paint job on top of that with uh, with uh, washes and uh, mixing in different shades of brown as well as green, which I think looks great and I absolutely love the head sculpt. I think that the head sculpt looks really fantastic and uh, really expresses the, um, the personality of the character. In sixth place, we have Dormammu. Now, I was considering kind of knocking him down because he is just a repaint of a previously released figure in an exclusive set. However, I don't have that that other figure, so you know it doesn't feel seem fair for me to knock it down for something that didn't affect me at all. Um, to be honest, this this way I could have the figure. So I really enjoyed this build figure a lot. I'm sure anybody that had the original cringed at seeing him as the build figure, but because I didn't, it didn't affect what I thought of the figure at all. I really enjoy this figure quite a lot. I think he's fantastic. I'm purple is my favorite color, and he has such a cool metallic purple on him. It just looks wonderful. I love the expressive head sculpt. It looks so cool, so classic, like you know, comic book villainy, uh, which I love. My only issue with this guy is that you did need to buy eight figures to build him, and he is not that big. So eight figures seems insane to me. But uh, the figure itself, I really love, and I did enjoy. Fifth place goes to the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut is obviously an iconic X-Men villain and um, just an iconic Marvel character in general. I really love the character and the figure does not disappoint. He's very large. He's probably the second largest figure on this list and uh, and he looks wonderful. He is knocked down a bit for the paint. I feel like he has an odd mixture of paint with really smooth areas and then the pieces of metal have some actual really nice detail in it. Would have liked to see that detail um, expressed uh, further within the costume rather rather than just on the metal pieces. However, excellent build a figure nonetheless. In fourth place, we have Warlock, my newest build a figure. Um, I really did enjoy this build a figure a lot. He's not particularly massive because he's got very skinny proportions. However, he's very tall. I love his kooky personality. I think it's great. And then I love the detail on this figure. He's full of cool electronic uh, style of detail. And then the paint they've added on top of that makes him really fantastic. I absolutely love the paint. Very dynamic, very cool, very vintage looking. Just looks like an awesome figure and uh, completely stands out from all the rest because he is so unique in his execution and his character design. 
In third place, we have Abomination. I really love this build of here. I think it's quite great. Just like Rhino, it has an excellent amount of detail. Um, and it, just the, every inch of this guy is full of great detail. And then on top of that, he has a terrific paint job. I really love the mixture of, uh, of greens in there, which just look fantastic. And then he has such a cool, expressive, and detailed head sculpt. It just looks wonderful. And he's obviously a classic, iconic uh, Marvel villain. So just uh, even better on top of that. I really love this build of figure. And it's just, it's the perfect design. In second place, we have Ironmonger. Ironmonger is a character that I really love, so I am very kind of partial to the figure. The figure itself is excellent. I really do like the sculpt, and his size is very accurate and very nice. And then the paint on top of that is really cool, but not so much for the detail of the paint, just for the uh, the coloring of it. It's got this really neat kind of pearlescent metallic blue coloring with like shades of black throughout it uh, to highlight some of the details. It's a really neat paint job. It's probably the most unique paint job. Uh, of a figure on this list, uh, maybe other than Warlock. Uh, so I'm really loving the, the execution of this figure from a design, sculpt, and painting perspective. It's really quite great, and then of course on top of that, a character that I personally like. And in first place, my favorite Build-A-Figure from uh, the Return of Marvel Legends to present day would have to be Hulkbuster from Age of Ultron. This was the same one that I chose last time. Um, it's my favorite Build-A-Figure for a reason. I really do love it from a, uh, an, a design perspective. The sculpt and the articulation is wonderful. The articulation is so surprisingly good. For something of this proportion, you really wouldn't expect much out of it articulation-wise. However, it's extremely dynamic, which really surprised me. and. Uh, and was completely fun. It's the biggest one on this list by far. It's not the tallest, but any of the figures that are taller than it are extremely skinny. Warlock and Giant Man are the only ones taller than it. And then by far, it's the bulkiest one. There's not even a, there's not one that comes close to his bulk. Juggernaut's the next closest one, and he's still a much smaller in general. So uh, I personally love this figure. My only complaint on it is the paint. The paint is very uh, bland, considering it should be much more metallic. However, uh, uh, the paint is something so small that uh, that the sculpt and articulation certainly make up for it and that so much excel that I absolutely love this Build-A-Figure. It is my favorite Build-A-Figure and I hope one day he isn't my favorite Build-A-Figure. However, it's going to be hard for a figure to come out to beat him. How, uh, but uh, I'm extremely excited to see if one ever does because that would be excellent. I'd really be happy with that. Alright, so there's my ranking of uh, the build of figures from 2012 with the Return of Marvel Legends up until present day. Um, this was very fun to make. I really did in enjoy putting this uh, this list together. I've always, I always have fun making uh, ranking videos, and you guys seem to really like it as well, so I'll definitely continue to do it. And I will do another um, update to this in the future. I'm not quite sure when that will be, but uh, hopefully it'll be... Uh, um, uh, within the next, maybe by the end of the year, somewhere around there, maybe the beginning of 2018, depending on how many Build-A-Figures I can get um, between now and then. Uh, the next two Build-A-Figures and the only ones that we have announced coming up are uh, uh, Mantis as well as the Vulture Wings. Mantis, although the figure I'm looking forward to, I think that that's a horrible choice for a Build-A-Figure. I mean, she, she'll... Other than Hitmonkey, she'll be the smallest build a figure here. And then uh, Vulture's wings, I'm incredibly excited for, but just, just his wings on his own seem like a very odd cho choice for a build a figure, so I am worried about that as well. So the next update might be kind of interesting with some, uh, w considering that, um, that Hasbro seems to be moving in a negative direction with their build a figures, uh, making them kind of small. But we'll have to see. I hope that, uh, that the, that hopefully they'll um, they'll show off some new build of figures coming up here that are very exciting. So let me know what you guys think of my ranking, and uh, let me know how you guys would rank these, or if you just want to tell me some of your least favorite or some of your favorite build of figures, I'd love to hear it. Thanks so much for watching.